Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Vesemash I'm the ESR number 5 of the UNODC project, and I'm pleased to present our most recent publication named Optimal Current Reference Calculation for RMCs Considering Converted Limitations. This presentation will be divided into the six topics, and let's start with the introduction. The RMC is a voted source converter, and therefore it shares the same characteristics, such as active and reactive powers can be controlled independently, it has black start capability, and more. The schematic of the converter is represented in this figure, and it has three legs, one per face. Each leg has two arms, the upper and lower arms, and each arm has a number of submodules in which its structure can vary from simple topologies such as half bridge and full bridge to even more complex ones according to the application. The contributions of this paper we can divide into two main contributions. The first one is to develop a steady state model in the natural ABC reference frame which will include all the MC's degrees of freedom. Secondly, we're going to formulate an optimization-based reference calculation problem that will ensure an optimal MMC operation under any network voted condition and TSO requirements, considering the converted limitations. To do so, we're going to develop a uh, mathematical model, and the MMC has DC and AC quantities, applying superposition a principle, we can divide these two quantities, and this circuit here represents the equivalent AC circuit. Applying Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law, we're going to have this mathematical description, this mathematical equation, sorry, that are describing the relations between the voltages and the currents. The underline represents a phasor, so the quantities underline represent a phasor, which means that they're going to have real and imaginary part. In addition, for the AC analysis, we are considering that the active and reactive power in the upper arm is equal to the active and reactive power in the lower arm, which means there is no power transfer between them. For the DC analysis, this is the DC equivalent circuit, and applying Kirchhoff voltage and current loss, we have these two equations. And most importantly, the steady state analysis, we are saying that the DC power in this arm is equal to the AC average active power in this arm. Therefore, the, the, the arm is not charging, the, the equivalent capacitors in this arm, the, the, the submodule capacitors, I'm sorry, are not charging or, or discharging, they are balanced. Uh, another interesting thing that we are considering in this optimization problem is the voltages in the submodule, the maximum and minimum voltages in the uh, submodule capacitors. To analyze them, we're going to apply the arm averaged model, which is represented as this figure here. Uh, and it says like this that this, all the submodules capacitors in the arm can be represented as an equivalent one and a voltage source. So, all the submodule capacitors are represented as this equivalent one. To know the voltages in the submodules or in the equivalent arm capacitor, we need to know its energy. And to know its energy, we need to know the power, the active power. So the active power in each arm is calculated with this equation. Then expanding this equation and eliminating the zero frequency terms, we're going to have a simplified uh, expression, which is, is, can be found in the paper. And if we integrate this expression over time, we're going to have the energy, the final energy expression for each arm. However, as we can see here, we have two uh, terms in the line frequency one and one term in double line frequency. Finding the maximum uh, value for each point, for each operating point of this expression, it's impossible without the interactive method. However, we can find the maximum bound and minimum bound of this equation uh, with some trigonometrical assumptions, some uh, trigonometric uh, simplifications, I'm sorry, considering that the sum of these two angles is 90 degrees. Then this is the final expression. So this is going to be the maximum ripple that the capacitor, that the energy can have. Then, under steady state conditions, uh, the capacitors, the equivalent arm capacitors, they're going to have a DC energy value, which is calculated with this expression. So, this term represents the submodule capacitance. This is the uh, available no the number of available submodules, and this term is the voltage in the submodule. 
So applying this equation, we're going to have the maximum and minimum values for the maximum and minimum energy bounds in the equivalent amp capacitors. Then simply applying uh, the relationship between them, the energy and the voltage, we have this expression that would, which we will be employing the optimization algorithm. For the grid support requirement, we are uh, adopting the Spanish uh, TSO, which is saying depending on the voltage level on the AC side, apply no voltage, no current, no reactive current, partial reactive current, or full reactive current. Two possible candidates is to employ only the positive sequence component, which is a nice approach. However, it's unable to provide full voltage support. Another option would be to consider the positive, negative, and zero sequence components of this voltage. However, if this strategy may try to impose zero sequence components in the AC side, and our system is a three-wire one, therefore it cannot have uh, zero, zero sequence current flowing through the AC side. So what are we going to do? We're going to uh, decompose, decompose the grid current, the real and imaginary part of the grid current, with this expression. So this is the active and reactive currents that the TSO is demanding to us, uh, depending on the fault. But let's say this figure here, we have a fault here and we are applying these voltage supports in, in, in brown. And as we can see, the resulted reference currents for phase B and C are already exceeding the converter limitations, are already exceeding what we can inject in the AC side. In addition, if we take a look at this red one, the IS pre, pre sorry, and the reference for C and B, it has a very asymmetric behavior, which results in zero sequence. Therefore, the optimization will try to maximize alpha and beta in order to not only eliminate the zero sequence in the AC side, minim uh, maximizing the, the current, however, not exceeding the maximum and all the other constraints that will be imposed with the optimization problem to ensure that the, the other quantities are not exceeding the converted limitations. So the optimization problem, um, I didn't put all the, the, the equations for the optimization, but you can, can find them in the paper. Just let's see the, the objective function. So we have a multi-objective function with three terms in which for this case, we want to maximize the amount of reactive current that we are injecting. Therefore, lambda three is the highest one. The second highest priority is the reactive current. So lambda two will have the second highest priority. And the lowest priority is lambda one, which, uh, which will try to reduce the impedance losses in the arms. For the case studies, we have this, this table here showing the system parameters. And here we have three different faults. We have the Fasorio behavior for three different faults, for a, a, a three-phase fault, a single line to ground fault, a line to line to ground fault. Uh, what we want is that the blue line, which represents the optimization one, has the same behavior as the purple one, which is what the TSO is demanding us. However, the purple one, has zero sequence. So it's not possible, it's unfeasible to have this condition because it's in the optimization that our system is three phase, is three wires, sorry. Therefore, as we can see, for, for, for all the three faults, the optimization is not, in, not imposing reactive current into healthy phases such as this one. So we are not, um, we're not gonna have over voltages in the healthy phases and also is maximizing the amount of reactive current that we can inject. This is a time domain response for a single line to ground fault. As we can see, the converter, the optimization is not, uh, it's not exceeding the converter limitations. We are also, as we can see here, we, are not, we don't have over modulation and all the NMC quantities are kept within their design limitations, as I mentioned earlier. In this case study, we are reducing the amount of available submodules in one arm for 400 to 330, and then the optimization will reduce the voltage that we can apply to this arm in order to avoid overmodulation, and is going to try to is going to increase the voltage levels for phase B and C in order to main, to to keep the pre-fault contingencies active and reactive power set points. 
these are the observations that I just mentioned. And as a conclusion, we, we develop an optimization-based reference calculation problem for the MMC. It has been formulated as a multi-objective problem, and different case studies have been presented. With this, I finish my presentation. Thank you very much.